Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So hopefully you watched the intro to this video. This is gonna be the first part. We're gonna do the simple thing. We're gonna prep a battery, the correct size battery for this ET4. If you have a North American ET4 or an ET4 with a leader motor, which is pretty much the motor from, I think, 2000 and later, this is a pre-leader motor. Uh, if you don't know what that means, it's just they had two different generations of motors in these old ET4s. Uh, so obviously find out what the correct battery is for your Vespa that's been sitting for all these years. Uh, you're gonna need a battery no matter what. These things will not start without a battery. Even though they do have a kickstart, it kind of deceives you. You think, oh, I could start with a kickstarter. Well, the ignition system's got a immobilizer system that has to detect and recognize a key and needs that battery in there. So we're gonna go ahead and install the battery. I'm gonna show you some of the issues, especially with uh, a non-sealed traditional conventional battery like this. These are not the best technology batteries. Um, here in 2021, batteries are much, much better. They're always sealed and now moving on to um, much higher grade lithium technologies. But this is a 25 year old scooter pretty much or just shy of 25 years old. Uh, we'll just stick with the original stuff. And it's nice thing is those batteries are pretty inexpensive. So we got the battery tray off on a you know, Vespa ET4 or a Vespa LX. You know, they have the battery underneath the um, seat. You look at my other videos for the locations of batteries on all sorts of different Vespas, whether it's a vintage or a 300cc Vespa. I cover the location, but pretty straightforward. Uh, basic mechanical abilities to change out the battery. Things to look out for with these conventional batteries, they do have a drain hose on the end. And so many people forget to hook that up. And the worst thing it does is it kind of oozes acid and vapors out and it starts corroding the frame and the wiring. It makes a complete mess. Uh, this hose is like a rock. So we're gonna definitely get rid of this hose. Uh, fortunately, when you buy a new battery, usually you get a new hose. So you kind of want to follow the routing of the hose. You know, this one's a little long, but it kind of just routes along the frame. It's definitely trash. Um, you just want to make sure you have these old conventional battery hoses vented away from any metal or wiring parts. So that's no good anymore. You got the goodie bag that comes with um, your battery, comes with the hardware, the terminal hardware. And unfortunately this hose is a little shorter. I'll probably just route it a little bit differently than what it originally was. Or um, a better idea would be to extend it or find a longer hose, just regular old vinyl hose, nothing special. Uh, hooks right up, right up to the vent right here. And usually it's got a pretty good friction fit. It will fit right on there. So um, this battery tray is kind of unique. It's got two positive terminals, one that's for the charging system, one that's for the starter and a single ground. Uh, differentiated by a little plus or a red. So if you see red or plus on the wires, that's your positive would go to the positive terminal and the black the one that will usually lead to the frame of the, the scooter is gonna be your negative terminal. So we'll get this hose in, you know, routed. Very important that you have a battery tray. A lot of people, for some reason, like to dispose of those battery trays. Not a good idea, because if the battery's bouncing around, it's not gonna have a very long life. And, um, and also the terminals come loose. Same with the battery cover. It's a very important part of this whole battery tray. I see so many scooters come through here and they have loose battery terminals and they're missing the tray and missing the cover or, or combination of both. Um, typically, so we got the hose routed. We'll work on that a little bit more later, but we get the hardware. And always a good rule of thumb with batteries is always start with a positive terminal. You're, you're less likely to have a short. So if you ground your scooter or your screwdriver against the frame, especially on something like the early GTS scooters, you won't end up with sparks and be burning up your wiring. So you got the two positive terminals, drop that nut right in there and start with our uh, positive. And right here, I just got a regular Phillips screwdriver. You could use the number three Phillips. That's actually the correct size for this. And I wanna make sure it's pretty tight. It kind of bites into the lead a little bit. Um, and then we'll do the negative terminal. Make sure your ignition key's off. Sometimes I'll give it a little spark test. May make a little spark at first. That's pretty normal. But if it's got some problem or a stuck electrical switch, it could be 
a situation where you hear the starter motor wind up even though the ignition's off or something. Uh, so just be pre prepared, you know, do a little test. Um, and even further down the line, we'll make sure that the, the, the battery is actually charging. I don't know. I mean, this scooter's been out of service for 15 years. Um, just kind of hold the nut. You don't even need to put a wrench on it, but just your fingers enough to hold it. And we got the battery in there. We'll work on the vent hose a little bit later, uh, but you definitely don't want to um, eliminate that. Okay, so I will check the motor, make sure there's engine oil in it before I even attempt to crank it. Right now there's no carburetor in it and there's no fuel or any means to turn on fuel to the engine where it could be a da dangerous situation. But we'll check some of the basic electrical systems on the scooter and we want to make sure there's oil in the motor. Uh, maybe even wise just to drain the oil. It's, you know, we're gonna definitely do that anyways on this old scooter. Um, but typically a, the scooters have a dipstick. Uh, these early ET4s had a sight glass, which is really nice. And so it's pretty easy to visually check the oil. So here's where you do the oil fill. This one, I don't think has a dipstick because right below it has a sight glass. This is pretty unusual because it's not a American market uh, scooter. And there's a minimum mark and a maximum mark. And I do see fluid in there. It doesn't look like milkshake or any waters in there or anything, but there is oil in it, so that's good. Um, you can always do the little test. Kickstart is useful for something. It's not very useful for starting these scooters, but it turns over and I feel compression. You could feel resistance on one part of the kick. That's a good sign. So the motor feels good. I think it's gonna turn over without issues. Uh, we don't know if we have electrical issues with the switches or the immobilizer system, but I have the original key to it. If you don't have the keys, um, unfortunately you're gonna have to send the whole mobilizer system, which is the ignition box that's located under here, to a dealer like us to have it coded or replace the components. Uh, the mobilizer is nice, keeps people uh, honest from stealing them, but if all the keys are lost, um, it's quite a costly endeavor to, to restore that. So. This one doesn't have the mobilizer light, but oh, I see all the lights here lighting up. The turn signal was left on. I like just checking everything. See that button's a little cr crusty. Sometimes just exercising the buttons, like pushing them in and out. Well, it'll start working, but if they don't work and they're a little scratchy, it's just all these switches are real inexpensive, so that's something you may keep in mind. Not, it, not critical for getting it running, uh, but we know we got turn signals. Uh, this model, the headlight comes on when you start it. Brake light works, both, both brake switches. You do need to have a brake light come on before you're able to start it. So, you know, if I push the start button, it does nothing at all. But if I pull the brake, let's see, here's the magic moment. Will it crank? <laughs> Sounds really good actually. Good compression, kind of that, that kind of noise, that rah, 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 kind of, I don't know, you can kind of hear. That's the starter motor working against the compression of the motor, and that's a good sign. If it was making kind of a constant running noise, it might have low compression, a stuck valve, or some other internal motor issues. All right, so we're going to check for spark next before we go any further, because I don't want to put a carburetor in that's delivering fuel and there's no spark. Um, the ET4s and LXs are not easy to change the spark plugs on them. Uh, it's kind of off to the side. They do give you an access door right here on the front of the frame. That's great if you have an ET2, which is a two-stroke model. But the, um, the four-stroke models, you know, it's like kind of off to the side and pretty difficult to get. So, so first of all, I have the intake plug. That's pretty important to do because you don't, if you drop anything down that, you could completely destroy the engine. May, may not be worth fixing at that point. So the spark plug cap, you wanna make sure they're, they're pulled off straight. You know, they're very easy to crack or break off onto the insulator. Um, sometimes you just get your hand in there and kind of work it off, but I find just having a long kneel nose and carefully levering it off. I'm kind of trying to do this with the, the camera. There we go. So it pulled away right there, no problem. And 
I could remove the spark plug, but what I'm gonna do is I'll just get a ignition tester. Uh, it's always a handy tool to have in your workshop and we'll check for spark. So on the Scooter West web store, we have these available. It's a uh, tool spark. It's kind of got the electrode of where a spark plug, you know, it looks like a spark plug. And sometimes they're a little bit hard to get in. You know, you don't necessarily need to go all the way in. You can also pull this rubber off the front of the spark plug cap. And if it's quite high miles, it might even be worth putting a new spark plug cap in the, the scooter, so. And here's uh, one thing I noticed is they have two different styles. The later ET4s do use a, a larger terminal, but this one has a cap that uses the more, uh, the smaller style threaded terminal. And you just unthread that little terminal off the, 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 the cap. So I'm gonna go ahead, you wanna rest this little ground terminal. I have it set to about six kilovolts. These have really strong ignition systems. Uh, make sure there's no fuel anywhere. I mean, you're gonna have an open spark right here and it will, um, you know, it could ignite any fuel that's around. So, you know, without the carburetor there, it's, it's not hooked up, it's not gonna make vacuum. I don't think the tank even has anything. Let's give it a try. So turn the ignition on. And my brake switch is sometimes acting a little, oh, look at that, nice spark. So I think we have success with ignition system. So that's good. Could go in there and just replace the spark plug as well. It's pretty tight in that little cavity right there. Um, if you have the factory tool kit, this scooter doesn't have the factory tool kit, it's possible to do with that, the factory uh, tools. But I'm just gonna assume that it, it was just parked in running, so there's probably no issue with the spark plug. And just kind of the audible sound of the motor cranking over. I know it has good compression, so I'm, I'm gonna cross my fingers. Uh, pretty much sum this video up, and the next video will be getting that carburetor installed. We're gonna replace the fuel tap, fuel lines, and that's gonna be the moment of truth. See if the motor will run and idle. And kind of get in there, and you wanna hear that snap. Make sure it, it's on there pretty tight. There we go. Uh, some of these early ET4s, they were known to pop the caps off the, off the uh, spark plug. That's kind of a problem. Get that covered back up. All right, well, thanks for watching. I think we're gonna have success. We have Spark here and most electrical systems look like they're working fine with the exception of some of the switches being a little rough. And that's something we certainly take care of maybe down the road. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. See you on the next one.